Joined here by LSU quarterback Joe Burrow entering his senior season on Off the Bench, ESPN, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Alexandria. Joe, good morning. Thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, tell me about the off season. I know that the uh, the Manning Passing Academy just wrapped up and you were down there. Um, tell me how you spent this off season getting prepared for, for your final year of college football. Yeah, I've really spent this off season just like I've spent every off season so far I've been in college, um, just working really hard, taking some time off, resting my body when I can. And you mentioned the Passing Academy, and that was that was a lot of fun getting to – to be around some of the top guys in the country. How, how was that experience? I know it's a different experience for the LSU quarterback, just with the attention of being in South Louisiana, but you're around so many just good players of that position, and then you bring in the Mannings, and you start talking about um, what, what they bring to the to the position in the game. Uh, what was that week like for you? It was a lot of fun. Um, they make it a lot of fun for all the guys to go, um, and you're around some really good players. NFL and college, um, and I really enjoyed picking the brain of Eli Payton and Archie. And Archie. Um, they were great to us as far as letting us talk, talking to us, sharing their trade secrets. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Biggest takeaway from, from those conversations? I can throw it. The biggest takeaway for me was I can throw it with anybody in the country, and I, that's what I was most excited to see how I stacked up against guys like Trevor Lawrence and Jake Fromm. Um, and I, I I can throw it with, with everybody in the country, and that was exciting for me. You guys win a New Year's Day Bowl last season. You, you win 10 games. You seem like in the offseason you're one of the hype teams. A lot of people are talking about you guys. W- what are your expectations for, for LSU this upcoming season? I mean, there's obviously high expectations for us. Um, our our expectations inside the program are probably higher than everybody else's. Um, but, yeah, I kind of have to shelf those and just focus on getting better every day. I know that's cliche, but I don't think you're going to be a very good football team if you can't do that. Um, Come off a year last year, we were not pegged to be one of the better teams in the SEC, and we kind of surprised a lot of people. But we have a lot of people coming back from last year, and we, now we have – the experience to go with it so I'm, I'm excited about the year joe burrow joining us here off the bench espn baton rouge new orleans and alexandria uh we, we've talked to a lot of people on this show whether it was coach o coach insminger coach brady last week we talked to mickey joseph everybody says it's your team do, do you feel like it is i feel like it's our team i don't i don't feel like it's my team or any one player on the team like, I don't think it's – I think it's our team. And Coach O talks about it. It's not his team. It's our team. It's not my team. Uh, it's LSU's team. And I think, you know, we have a lot of leaders that kind of work together to, to create this thing. One of the things that, that seems like it, it's it's pretty common when you talk to people that are around this off offseason um, is the workouts that you guys are doing for, for players just individually. Um, how has that been going? Yeah, it's been great. Um I had never really been any been around anything like that, and I think it's great for not only the young players getting them some experience before we head into camp, but for the old guys too. I'm putting in new things, and it's good for us to just be creative without the coaches out there and kind of feel what we want to do. The leaders can become better leaders as well without the coaches out there because they're really doing the coaching. Guys like me, Lloyd, our center, and, and guys on defense, you can really see leaders emerging in that atmosphere. You're getting your look at, at some of these young guys, uh, fresh some of these, these these rookies, whether it's Trey Palmer or John Emery, or who's some of the young guys that might be bouncing out or, or standing out. Yeah, they're they're all standing out, and it's tough tough to really see because they're just now learning how to be college football players and and how to play at this level with these kind of offenses and defenses um so they're still feeling it out but you can definitely see the talent that we have in this green class and we're going to be counting on some of those guys come september and late august and i'm excited to see what they can do in camp because that's really when when they're going to shine how about for you um in in the season from comparing last year to this year and just personally and what you've learned i guess about the environment in being in south louisiana i think i read last 
week where where you actually lost weight during the season because you weren't you know you weren't thinking that it was going to be ninety degrees in December first. Yeah. Um, what what's been kind of the the, the biggest um, adapting method for you? What, what's how, how you become more comfortable in, in living in Baton Rouge and, and being the quarterback for LSU? Yeah, it's, it's hard to describe because it was. I mean, coming in, I didn't, had no idea what to expect really, and you know, it took me a while to get used to the dynamics in the locker room, and, and it's kind of just hard to hard to verbalize what it means to to be a leader in that situation because I just had never been around people from Louisiana or from Texas. Um, and so being from Ohio, I was just different than everybody else. So I had to learn how to, to fit in in that environment and then find my niche as a leader. And it took a while, but I'm getting really comfortable. All right, everybody's talking about you uh, this offseason going into the into your senior year and the expectation around the quarterback spot, and everybody's fired up that LSU has a quarterback coming back with some experience. Uh, but another Joe that everybody's talking about is Joe Brady, and, and we had Joe Brady on a couple of weeks back, and he was talking about the relationship that you and he had cultivated in just a short time and the amount of respect that he has for you, the football player, and off the field. Um, tell me about your relationship with, with Brady and, and the changes that he brings to that side of the ball this year. Yeah, whenever you have two guys that love the game of football, they're going to form a relationship pretty quickly no matter how close in age or coach player, player coach. You know, if, if you love the game, you're going to you're going to bond with somebody. And I think we have that with with me and all of our coaches on the offensive staff. Um, coach Brady has brought in some really nice new concepts that I'm excited about. Uh, and Coach G has, has brought in some of his own from his studies this offseason. Um so I think we're kind of working to build this thing collaboratively, and I think it's going to be really, really explosive. I'm I'm really excited to showcase it. Joe Burrow joining us here, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. Um, the fans, everybody that covers the game, everybody that covers LSU, is expecting this this much different offense this year because of what, what you guys were talking about in spring, and and I guess the the impact that Joe Brady brings. How different will it look? You know, I think I think it's going to look a little different. Um, you know, you kind of want to be a little little guarded because nobody really knows what exactly we're going to look like yet, so we don't want to give away too much. Um, but I, I can't say we're very excited about where we're going. Uh, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit, get get our playmakers in space because one thing LSU always has is playmakers. Um, so we're going to spread the field out and and get those guys in space and let them go to work. I want to talk to you about a couple of those playmakers here in a little bit, but one thing that Brady and Ensminger emphasized when they were here was that the quarterback's going to have to protect himself this season because there's not going to be a lot max protects. They're going to send backs out. They're going to have tight ends going out. Um, how has that transition for you, that increase in workload, gone into your off-season preparation? You know, it really hasn't. That's kind of what I've been, I've been doing my whole life, five-man protection, get the ball out fast. You know, if I get pressure, find the back right now, get get four yards and don't make a bad play worse. Um, that's really what I've been doing. So that's that's what I'm comfortable with. So I really haven't changed what I – like my mindset at all. I really had to change my mindset last year. So I really hadn't been in an offense like that before. Um, but I think this five-man protection, six-man protection, get more people out in routes will help us go faster and help our own line. Um, maybe later later in the game when, when they're getting tired. Joe, was it true that you had never played under center? Like you had never dropped back before last year. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I, so I didn't take a snap under center since probably youth league, sixth grade, yeah. That's crazy. But So, I mean, like how how, how far along in the process is, did, did you finally feel comfortable doing that? I mean, I could tell you that I was comfortable with it. Miami, game one, but I really wasn't. <laughs> Um, I was out there kind of just winging it, just trying to play football, trying to win games any way that I could. And then the last part of the season, I think you could see us kind of take off yeah. when, when I got comfortable and when our offense got com- comfortable playing together. Cause people forget we had like nine or ten new starters on the offensive side of the ball. So the last part of the season, we, we kind of got it clicking. 
Talk to me about some of these playmakers. Man, everybody's talking about Jamar Chase after spring. Stephon Sullivan seems like he's going to have a new defined role in this offense at wide receiver. And then, I mean, just the talent you guys have at that position. Uh, Got to be pretty cool to be the quarterback of this team when you look at the wide receiver depth chart. Absolutely. There's no shortage of playmakers on the outside with, with Paris, Jamar, Justin. Um, we have D, Stephon. You know, we have we have the guys to go and do it. And, you know, my job as quarterback to – get the ball in their hands on time with an accurate ball so they can go make plays after the catch. What would you make of the SEC schedule last year? Like, what you think about going to, to the venues on the road and hosting big SEC games? What was that like for, for you? Yeah, there was, there was definitely no cakewalk in the SEC. And that, you know, playing in the Big Ten for a while, I was always on, you know, the SEC is kind of overrated and, Playing, playing a season in the SEC, I can tell you it's definitely not overrated. It's tough week in and week out. Um, so that, that'll that kind of change my mindset going into the year that i got I got to be ready every game and play my A game in order to win games. We had your old man on a couple of weeks back, or, or it was it was right after spring, and he was oh, fired yeah. up. He was talking about uh, that he was finally had a year off of football and not coaching and to be able to watch you play. I wonder, everybody we talk to, talks. one of the first things they say about you is that he's a coach's son. Do you take that as a compliment? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it's probably helped me as far as understanding new systems more quickly. It probably helped me in the transition down here, learning a new style of football, and learning how to be a leader faster. Um, but, yeah, I would definitely say it's a compliment when people say he's a coach's kid because that just – I think that means I understand the game and I'm tough and I'm a good leader. How cool is it that he's going to be able to watch you play every game this year? No, I'm fired up about it. Uh, my my mom was down here every game last year, and um, I think he's fired up to come come see game day in in Baton Rouge. He didn't get to see it last year. He was able to come to um, Texas a and game, the bowl game, and the Miami game because they were playing. They had a bye week or were playing in the middle of the week. But he hasn't seen a game day in Baton Rouge yet, so I'm fired up for him nice. to see that. Nice. LSU senior quarterback Joe Burrow joining us here off the bench. A couple more minutes, ESPN, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and uh, and Alexandria. Um, we, we were talking to you about about the offense, and every day you guys go up against Dave Aranda's defense. And on that side of the ball, there's some guys with some accolades coming in, whether it be Grant Delpin on the on the third level or, or a guy like Michael Divinity on the second level. What's it like going up against those guys every day? Yeah, it's definitely a challenge for us when – we're playing DBs like that and a pass rush like that. It really makes us play our A game every every day in practice, and I'm hoping it'll make the make the game days easier with this new offense. Um, still getting used to it, and so sometimes the defense kind of kicks our butts a little bit. But you know, you just kind of have to take a step back and realize that when you have a defense like Coach Aranda's defense, they're going to get you every once in a while. One more on the offense. How's the working dynamic in the room between Brady, Ensminger, and you? It's awesome. It's like I said earlier. It's really a collaborative effort building this thing. And there's, you know, Coach E has the final say, but he does a great job of not only listening to every, all the coaches' inputs, but mine too. And you know, I'm I feel very comfortable with sharing my ideas. And sometimes he'll like them. Sometimes he won't. Sometimes he'll implement them. Sometimes he won't. But you know, it's a really good atmosphere for for creativity because he he's so he's so awesome with hearing ideas. How's your relationship like with the with the head coach with Ogeron? Coach Coach O is my guy. Um, he knows that I wouldn't have wouldn't have been here without without Coach O. He's a great person, a great coach, and I'm excited to play another year under him. How'd you spend the fourth? I'm um, just relaxing here in Baton Rouge. We had two days off of workouts, so. I relaxed at the pool in my apartment for a little bit. Nice. Um, didn't do anything crazy. Watched the fireworks on the levee. That's about it. Bro, I love your voice on on, on athletes and what you guys are, are, are entitled to as players and, and retweeting Jay Billis and, and, and talking about that. You have a powerful voice in the sport in the SEC in Baton Rouge. And uh, I think that you are a, a positive influence that because you're, you're one of the great stories of the transfer portal. Um, what, what is, do you, do you see the NCAA kind of evolving 
as, as you guys, as players, and, and the system continues to apply pressure on that organization? I, I sure hope so. I think you see guys gaining eligibility from transferring right away, and I think that's great for for the sport and great for players. The more you the more you restrict players, I think the worse the game is going to be. Um, you know, I'm all about using my platform, and that's something that I feel kind of passionate about. Um, as far as compensating players, players' rights, and that's something that I've been passionate about for a while and that I've kind of been studying for a while as well. That's awesome, man. Um, anytime you want to use that voice and need a platform to speak to the public, you can always come here to Off the Bench. We appreciate the time this morning. I'd imagine we'll see you at SEC Media Days next week. Yeah, I think I think you probably will. We'll see about that. <laughs> hey, man, have a great senior season. We'll catch up. Uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You got it. Off the bench with Kalana and Tebow.